Well, last Tuesday night, the IPFW Mastodons got a couple of big baskets from Jerron Burroughs, one to tie the game, and then the other to win a big game, 79-77 over Western Illinois. Today, Jerron and his teammates hope to make it three wins in a row as they get ready to entertain the Highlanders from New Jersey Institute of Technology. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Mass. Welcome to another edition of IPFW Men's Basketball here on College 5 Sports. I'm joined by former Mastodon Charlie Washington. And Charlie, the Dons had some troubles on the road, but they've come back with back-to-back -back wins at home over Anderson University and Western Illinois. Well, this also, Mike, this is going to be the type of game that's going to increase the RPI ratings, but it's a win that's going to keep the momentum going for IPFW. They need the win to get that, uh, keep that ball rolling, and great win. Another from the five overtime win to this one, very close two-point game. A good upswing for the Dons going into this one. Well, the Dons are 6-11, and 11, having won two games in a row. Their opponents today, New Jersey Institute of Technology, otherwise known as NJIT, they're in their first year as NCAA Division I. They come off a big win at home about four days ago, but they've only won three games this season. Well, this is the type of team, you're coming into your home, you have to protect home court, and that's going to be a big thing for the Dons. We have to make, going into the conference, we have to make this place our home and make it a home uh, field advantage, so to speak. So this type of team coming in won't help the RPI ratings, like I said, but we have to come away with a pretty big win here this evening. IPFW still hobbled a little bit. Injuries to Quentin Carruthers and uh, Jelko Egerich, but uh, hopefully they'll do well today, but they are undermanned a little bit. Charlie. Well, it's going to be very important, being a short man, to continue to make outside shots, and we need to get to the free throw line. We don't get to the free throw line very much. We have to get there and make them because we also aren't shooting a very high percentage. It's IPFW getting ready to take on NJIT. Please stay tuned. Starting lineups and the opening tip are coming up next right here on College 5 Sports. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing. Division one sports. I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field, and IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Brought to you by College 5 Sports on my network. Digital Broadcast 33.2, Comcast out of Virginia and here at the Coliseum a couple of big baskets by Jerron Burroughs enabled the Dons to defeat Western Illinois for the second time this year 79-77 so both teams coming in with a good taste in their mouth. Well and with our injuries uh, tonight or this afternoon this evening our early afternoon matinee we have to have a big uh, another big effort from uh, Mr. Burroughs uh, He's on a big roll, 23 points, been playing very well as of late. And we need his athleticism, his length, and um, that ability to get to the basket. Well, let's bring you today's starting lineups for the visitors from New Jersey Tech. At the guards will be Clayton Barker, a 5'10 senior out of Passaic, New Jersey, and Andrew Engel, a 6'1 freshman out of Millersville, Maryland. The forwards are Craig Peters, a 6'5 junior out of Mount Laurel, New Jersey, and Nesho Malesevich. A 6'8 sophomore out of Bar Montang Montanguigo. And uh, in the middle, it'll be Dan Stonkus, a 6'9 freshman out of Monmouth Junction, New Jersey. 
the head coach at NJIT in his sixth year, Jim Cassiano. For IPFW, their starters look like this. At one guard will be Jakari Johnson, a 6'4 sophomore out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Another guard will be Chris Perkins, a 6'2 junior from Villa Park, Illinois. The forwards, Justin Hawkins, a 6'6 senior from Garrett, Indiana, and Jerron Burroughs, a 6'8 junior from Nassau in the Bahamas. And starting at center will be Tyler Best. Tyler is a 6'9 senior out of West Lafayette, Indiana. The head coach at IPFW in his second year is Dane Fife. Our officials this afternoon, Brian Anslinger, Greg Webb, and Merlin Nice. IPFW in the home white with blue trim, blue letters, blue numbers. New Jersey Tech, red uniforms with white trim, white numbers, and letters. Burroughs is in the circle, but New Jersey Tech. Left on your television screen here in the first half. And with the basketball is Andrew Engel. IPFW coming out in man-to-man -man defense, Charlie. Lob pass inside to Milosevic, and he puts one home. 2-0 NJIT. in JIT. Well, even though they have a 3-13 and record, Mike, they're not going to lay down and let the Mastodon and give them uh, this game. Tonight. Ball knocked out of bounds. Possession remains. IPFW's. Tyler Best will inbound it. We've played 34 seconds, and JIT on top, two to nothing. Inbounds pass to Jakari Johnson inside the arc. His first shot is up and in. The sophomore from Grand Rapids, Michigan, ties the game at two apiece. Very important to get off to a good start, good up fake, and nail the jumper. Highlanders in red, moving the ball around. Engel watched by Chris Perkins. Gets it to Stockis. Make it to a Barker. Perimeter passing by New Jersey Tech. Another shot is off the mark by Milosevic. IPFW comes down with the rebound, and here is Chris Perkins into Jaron Burroughs. Kino is one of his nicknames. Turnaround jumper off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Craig Peters. And back comes NJIT. On that last shot, Mike Burroughs got pushed about a step further than he wanted to be on the post and made that shot just a little more difficult. Ball knocked out of the hands of Stankis. It'll remain New Jersey Tech ball. 18-24 left here in the first half. We are tied 2-2. Highlanders win by on the basketball. Here is Barker. Tries to penetrate, dishes off. Long three-point shot is off the mark by Peters. And here comes IPFW up the floor with a chance to take their first lead of the afternoon. Looks like uh, Tech is playing man-to-man, -man, Charlie. Yep, that's what it appears to be. Nice screen. Jakari Johnson tried to get the shot up. Got it up, didn't hit it, but he is fouled and he'll shoot a pair. Nice little hesitation move off the left hand dribble going to the basket. Foul was on Craig Peters, his first team first. So here is the uh, Jakari Johnson at the foul line. Jakari, 61% foul shooter. First free throw is up and in. That's a good sign. Very good sign. Johnson has all three Mastodon points and he has given IPFW a 3-2 lead. There's one more free throw coming. And that's good as well. 4-2 Mastodons as we are under 18 minutes here in the first half. There's Tech with the basketball. Clayton Barker is number one. It's the pass to Angle. Peters looking for help. Mastodon stretching out their man-to-man -man defense, Charlie. Looking pretty well. They're running them through a lot of screens and a lot of movement, and the Dons are holding uh, tight right now. Barker wheels and deals. Angle for three as the shot clock goes off. He knocks it down. Great defense, great clock management that time by the Highlanders. They are up five to four. 
Here's Burroughs, a lot past the best in the block. TB bounces it off the glass and in. Didn't quite think he'd be long enough to stretch across that basket, but good job that time by Best. FW retakes the lead six to five. We're under 17 minutes left to play here in the opening half. On a Saturday afternoon in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Angle watched by Perkins. Milosevic in and out, no good. And Burroughs with the rebound. I think the Dons will live with him taking that outside shot right there. Tyler Best will launch a three. That's off the rim, no good. Craig Peters pulls down the board. Pass picked off by Best, intended for Stankus. Outlet to Johnson, Jakari off the glass and in. That's great defense that time. Worked his way around, Travis Best did around the uh, offensive player. And in the pass, he worked while the ball was in the air. When the pass got there, he was right there to nab it. Jakari Johnson already with six points. It's an 8-5 Mastodon lead. Peters wants to drive on Hawkins. Cut off there, Here's Barker looking for help. A shot off the mark, Best with the rebound. Third Mastodon rebound. Perkins just inside the foul line. His shot is no good. And here comes Tech back up the floor. Barker for three. No good. Fight for the rebound. It's knocked out of bounds. They said last touch by IPFW, and we have timeout on the floor. 15-28 left in the half. It's IPFW 8 and T5. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 5 Sports. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. People with diabetes are two to four times more likely to suffer a stroke than people without diabetes. And many who survive are severely disabled. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. Learn how to reduce your risk of stroke. Call for your free diabetes survival guide. Join head coach Dane Fife on College 5 for the Dane Fife Show, featuring highlights and insights on the Macedons from the head coach and his guest. Here's truly Mike Miles, host the show. It's seen three times weekly, Wednesdays at 7, Fridays at 7, and Saturdays at noon, right here on College 5 Sports. Back to the action. Peters misses a three-point shot. Perkins rebounds it. Don's on the run. DeWitt Scott, the long three is up and in. Charlie DeWitt Scott has been lights out since first of the year. And he's creeped up to number 21 in the nation in three-point shooting, and that will help. IPFW up 11 to five at the 15-minute mark here in the first half. Milosevic trying to go down low, and they say he travels with a basketball. That is the second turnover on New Jersey Tech here this afternoon. Get a good look at head coach Dane Fife. In his second year, Dane still the youngest coach in NCAA Division I. Checking into the Highlander lineup will be Mark Milburn Swan. He's a 6'5 senior out of Pleasantville, New Jersey. And bringing the ball up the floor for IPFW is Chris Perkins, junior out of Illinois. Inside feed to Burroughs, shot his Knocked away, but uh, Greg Webb will call a foul. And that's a great move by Burroughs. Put the onus on the referee. Attack that basket hard and strong. And that young man has to get fouled and can go to the free throw line and now make the two free throws. Fouls on Dan Stonk is his first team second. Jerron Burroughs gets the friendly bounce. And next on the first free throw. Burroughs has a couple of nicknames. Keno and licorice. 
But boy, did he play Tuesday night against Western Illinois. Second free throw, also good. So 14.45 to go here in the first half. IPFW up 13 to five. There is Engel, watched by Perkins. And Mastodon's in a man-to-man -man defense. Now in the lineup is Corsi Magnus. Gets the ball back out to Engel. 10 on the shot clock. Peters. Got to do something. Spin move. Pass is picked off by Perkins. Good deep by the Dons. Perkins coast to coast. Shot is partially blocked and back comes Tech. Angle with the basketball. Good defense that time uh, by Perkins on both ends. On the steal and just now on the Highlanders coming up court. Magnus beyond the arc. Kicks it up top to Stankus. Now to Angle. He'll launch a three. In and out. No good. Fight for the rebound. Putting it up and in is Milburn Swan. Count the bucket and he draws a foul. That was a big strong rebound. And stick back and took the contact and completed. The or, foul, I'm sorry, Charlie, the foul was on Jakari Johnson, his first. That's the first IPFW foul in the game. And shooting a free throw will be Mark Mel, uh, Milborn Swan. He is a 72% free throw shooter. attempt to bring the Highlanders to within five at 13 to eight. And he does. So it's a five point IPFW lead. Pat Lepper is on the floor for the first time for the Dons. And he'll launch a three and that's good. Now well, Lepper makes his presence felt in a hurry. Well, Leper and DeWitt, Scott, come in and right on, as soon as they get into the game, shoot three-pointers. Typically, you don't tell guys to do that. You tell them to get up and down a couple of times, get sweat going, but they've nailed it. Milburn Swan makes the bucket, but they're going to call it off. And they're going to call an offensive player control foul instead. That is the first foul on Mark Milburn Swan. And even he agreed with the referee that that was indeed an offensive foul. The third New Jersey foul of the game. Team foul, that is. So again, here is Chris Perkins bringing up the ball up the floor as we near the 13-minute mark here in the first half. 16-8 our score. IPFW on top. Justin Hawkins will try a three, and that's no good. Rebounded by Dan Stankus. Hands it off to Andrew Wingo, and now they bring the ball up. Clayton Barker. In perimeter passing by Tech, and we have a hand check call going to be charged to Pat Lepper. That's Pat's first foul, team second. Coming in for New Jersey Tech, Corey Magnus, number five, and Milosevic, number 35, back on the floor for the second time. Coming in for IPFW is Jerron Burroughs, number 34, and Demetrius Johnson, number 15. As you got a quick look at head coach Jim Cassanio. Barker watched by DeWitt Scott. Magnus for three, yes. Long three-point field goal. All right, Corsi Magnus. Back comes Burroughs. The shot is short. Rebounded by Tech. Nice move. Burroughs did everything but finish the play that time. But good athletic move. A lot of pass in the block for Melbourne Swan. Driving on Hawkins. His shot is short. Scott pulls down the rebound, and IPFW is on the run. Leper fakes the three. Hands off to Scott. DeWitt will launch it. In and out. No good. Rebounded by Milosevic. Magnus wants to drive on Johnson, but Demetrius cuts him off. Melbourne Swan, turnaround shot is no good. Traveling call. Charged to New Jersey Tech. We have a timeout on the floor. 
11.44 left here in the first half. It's the Mastodon 16, the Highlanders 11. You're watching IPFW Men's Basketball on College 5 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. Mm. So, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. For tickets to IPFW athletic events, call 260-481-6000 or go to the IPFW athletics website at GoMastodons.com. Again, the phone number, 260-481-6000 or go online at GoMastodons.com. 16-11, our score, 11.43 to go here in the first half. IPFW with the lead in the basketball. Along with Charlie Washington, this is Mike Maas. IPFW going for the third win in a row. John Burroughs, high post, gets it to Leper. Inside back to Burroughs. Spin move, kicks it out. Johnson for three, that misses the mark. Rebounded by Corsi Magnus, and here come the Highlanders. Mike, the Dons have cooled off from outside. They started out blistering hot, and now they're cooling it down. Magnus, watched by Johnson. Plenty of time on the shot clock, 17 seconds. There's Clayton Barker. Under 11 minutes to play here in the first half. PFW up 16-11. Three-point shot is no good, but a late whistle by Brian Anslinger. And Pat Lepper is going to be called for a foul. It's Pat second, the team third, but Charlie, New Jersey Tech, is going to shoot three free throws. Yeah, Magnus has been watching those old Reggie Miller uh, ESPN classic highlights. Let's kick the leg out and fall down and make the referee call that foul. Corsi Magnus is a 6'3 junior at a Plymouth meeting PA. First free throw drops through the net. He now has four points. Well, this could be a big momentum builder for New Jersey Tech. Well, they've been hanging around. The Dons have allowed them to go up, and we have an opportunity to kind of knock them down into a big hole, but we miss an opportunity. They come down and take advantage, and they've never gone away. Second free throw is good as well. Tech is now three of three at the foul line, and here's the third free throw, and that is good. So three for three at the line for Magnus, and all of a sudden the lead is cut to two, 16 to 14. And they come out with some zone pressure, some trapping zone pressure. Burroughs down low, goes up and is hammered. Now Jakari Johnson got the ball into Jerron Burroughs. Well, he's going to the free throw line, Mike, but uh, we had saw him a couple of moments earlier. He was wide open, just he in the basket. Foul was on Magnus, his first. That is the fourth on New Jersey Tech, and Jerron Burroughs, who was two for two already at the foul line, getting a chance to make a couple of more. Oh, first one bounces off the back of the iron and out. Tyler Best checking back in for IPFW, replacing Justin Hawkins. Burroughs, as we said, came into the game a 64% free throw shooter. He is two for three, and now three for four. The lead is three, 17-14. Under 10 and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Magnus being hounded by Perkins. Craig Peters back on the floor. Melbourne Swan would like to drive on best. 
Starts his move, takes the shot, and gets the friendly roll. Well, he traveled that time. I'm not real sure he traveled the last time he uh, got called for it, but he certainly moved the feet that time and didn't get the call and got the basket. Mark Milburn Swan now with five points. It's a one point Mastodon lead. Burroughs driving on Melbourne Swan. Turnaround shot is no good. Rebound plucked off by Milosevic. And here come the Highlanders. Chance to retake the lead. Greg Peters, watched by Scott. Magnus kicks it out. Three pointer on the way is good. And all of a sudden, New Jersey Tech is on top, and IPFW throws it away. And you see the IPFW Brain Trust. So here comes New Jersey Tech, IPFW's now in a 1-3-1 zone defense. Parker, cross-court pass to Magnus. Long three-point shot off the rim. Rebound pulled down by Jerron Burroughs. It's Perkins playing the role of point guard. I think a good job that time by the Dons, just to change the rhythm. Uh, certainly the momentum has changed to the Highlanders and going to that 1-3-1, one, one, change momentum. Best driving on Milosevic draws the foul. Tyler Best will go to the line to shoot a couple. For an issue Milosevic, that's his first foul, fifth team foul. And Tyler Best, the 6'9 senior from West Lafayette, Indiana, will be at the line shooting a couple. Very good move by Best that time. That should clear up some of the outside. You have to go inside out, Mike, and we have great uh, three-point shooters, but we have to soften them up a little bit, go inside some, and uh, Best and Burroughs can certainly do that for the Dons. Tyler knocks down the first free throw. Substitution for New Jersey Tech. Second free throw good as well. IPFW now, seven out of eight at the foul line. We're tied at 19. Well, they heard us at the outset, Mike. They have to make get to the free throw line and also make free throws. Barker. Bounce passes to Engel. Back to Barker, around the horn to Peters. Lob pass intended for Milosevic over his head and out of bounds. That is turnover number five on New Jersey Tech. So here comes IPFW, and they will attempt to break a 19-19 tie. Perkins to Scott. Perkins, Good best pass. underneath, makes it off the glass and in. Good pass and a great job by Best to use the rim as a defender against a defender to keep that uh, defensive guy from blocking the shot. Best now with a half a dozen. Under eight minutes, it's an IPFW lead of 21 to 19. And Mike, the change of defense is giving the Highlanders some problems. Barker to Engel, three-point shot on the way. No good, fight for the rebound, pulled down by Milosevic. His shot is blocked by Johnson, but the putback is good. Persistence for Milosevic. We're tied at 21. He stayed with it. Great defense by the Dons, but give my Milosevic credit. Johnson for three. No. Tap up, no. Tap again. And the ball is pulled down by Clayton or Barker. And he goes coast to coast. Milosevic on the follow up. Back to back buckets by Nisho Milosevic have given New Jersey Tech a 23 21 lead. And Dane Five calls a 30 second timeout with 7.09 left here in the first half and the last couple of times down the court Charlie Washington New Jersey Tech has crashed the offensive boards just great effort by Milosevic um, those you can't say you know wasn't talent skill so much to speak just hard work and effort crashing the boards keeping the ball alive and finally tipping it in on, on the last two occasions as you stated New Jersey Tech 6 of 16 from the floor for 38 percent as we get to look at a replay IPFW 8 of 20 from the floor for 40 percent Nice feed in to Best, and he banked it off the glass and in. And as I stated, great job there using that rim, going under the rim on the other side of that rim so that the defender could not get to the basketball. 
Mastodons, the wind bounded right in front of our location. Tyler Best to Chris Perkins. Justin Hawkins back on the floor. Best down low, and he is fouled as he goes up. Tyler gets a couple of more free throws. And I would keep going there, Mike, and until the Highlanders find an answer to that, I'd keep going to that well. Timeout on the floor, exactly seven minutes left until halftime. It's New Jersey Tech 23, IPFW 21. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 5 Sports. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. I'm getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts. Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. Back at the Coliseum, Tyler Best knocks down the first of two free throws. He has scored the last five IPFW points, Charlie Washington. And that, and that type of play is only going to make those shots for DeWitt Scott and others on the outside arc a little easier as they have to send another defender to double him or let him run wild underneath the basket. Second free throw good as well. We are tied at 23. Andrew Engel cut off. He gets it back to Barker. They work it around to Peters. Three-pointer on the way. No good. Fight for the rebound, and we got a whistle. And the ball is going to go to IPFW. Merlin Nice calls a foul on Andrew Engel. It is his first team seventh, so IPFW now in the one and one with 641 left in the first half. And it's like DeWitt Scott got in there rebounding and go to the line. Not a bad candidate to go to the line. One and one. First one is good. Four points now for the six foot, six inch junior out of Chicago. One more coming. And that is good as well. IPFW shooting their best free throws of the season. It's now 25 23. And traveling call on New Jersey Tech. That is their sixth turnover. Corsi Magnus checking back in, replacing Clayton Barker for the Highlanders. Tyler Best to win bound the basketball to Chris Perkins. Barker's been one of their better players, leading scorers, and he's been very quiet this afternoon. Jakari Johnson back on the floor for the Dons as well. Jakari watched by Andrew Engel. Best, high post. 15 on the shot clock. The wheel play, Scott turnaround jumper is good. Nice feed from Jakari Johnson to DeWitt Scott. A little reminiscent of the old Hoosiers picket fence. Don't, don't, don't get caught watching the paint dry there. DeWitt Scott now with seven points. Again, IPFW in their 1-3-1 zone. It's been done very well for them. And the Highlanders have not done very much at all. They went on a big run, got the momentum change, but since we've gone into that 1-3-1, little to nothing has happened positive for the Highlanders. Engel driving on Scott, kicks it out, boss knocked out of bounds, last touch by Craig Peters as he goes into the stands. Great effort, but it'll be IPFW basketball. 5.31 left here in the first half. IPFW on top of New Jersey Tech, 27 
to 23. And Mike, just any level of basketball is all about adjustments. IPFW made a great adjustment to the big run by the Highlanders, and now with that 1-3-1 uh, zone pressure and uh, trapping defense, giving the Highlanders all types of problems, they have to come up with an answer to it. So they haven't made the adjustment as of yet, and the Dons are hopefully going to take control of this basketball game. Well, here comes Chris Perkins moving from the left to right on your TV screen. DeWitt Scott drives his shot is off the mark, partially blocked, picked up by the Highlanders. Engel wants to bring it up quickly. Knocks down the shot. They're going to count it. Yes, they are. Count the bucket, and Justin Hawkins charged with the foul. And that's the adjustment that we were just talking about, Mike. Uh, the Highlanders got the rebound, kicked the ball out, got the ball up court before the Downs could get into that 1-3-1 that had been giving the Highlanders problems. And hence, therefore, if you have a basket and a foul to boot. Andrew Engel tried to get the conventional three-point play. No good is the shot. Hawkins with the rebound. So IPFW now up by two, 27-25. Jakari in the lane, kicks it the best. TB, left-hand shot is in. Nice fake and up move that time by Tyler Best and also great pass and penetration. Tyler Best now in double figures with 10 points. Magnus watched by Jakari Johnson and Hawkins. Again, the 1-3-1 zone employed by head coach Dane Fife. Oh, nice feed to Melbourne Swan and he banks it off the glass and in. Found the seam in the zone, Charlie. Yeah, that's the best possession by far they've had against that 1-3-1 uh, uh, zone trap. DeWitt Scott looking for a teammate. Gets it to Hawkins. Back to Perkins and around to Jakari Johnson, top of the key. Perkins stops, pops, no good. Off the back of the iron, rebounded by him. Looked good. Stonkis. Magnus. Working on the perimeter. Peters. Ball knocked away by Hawkins. Picked up by Johnson. Bounce pass to Scott. Nice spin move by DeWitt, but he misses the bunny. Boy, it looked pretty, but the result, not so pretty. Yeah, great spin and turn, but kind of uh, smacked it off the glass a little bit too hard. Magnus to Peters in the corner. Peters, baseline drive, and oh, he goes to the basket and draws the foul. Fouls on Chris Perkins. When we return, New Jersey Tech will be at the foul line shooting a couple of free throws. 3.39 left until the intermission. It's IPFW 29, New Jersey Tech 27. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 5 Sports. Do you have everything you need? Paper, pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Warning, ruthless invaders are among us and the future of fishing depends on stopping them dead. Only you can prevent invasive species from spreading before it's too late. Inspect, clean and drain your boat, motor and live wells and properly dispose of invasive species on land, not back in the water. Stop these evil menaces from taking over and threatening our precious outdoor heritage. Inspect, clean and drain. Do your part to halt the silent invasion. The latest Mastodon scores and stats are available on the World Wide Web by going to GoMastodons.com. Again, check up on teams, players, and you can order tickets as well at the official Mastodon Athletics website, GoMastodons.com. 3.39 left here in the first half. IPFW on top of New Jersey Tech 29-27. Craig Peters at the line for a pair, and he knocks down the first one. Peters now with four points on the afternoon. Peters played pretty well. He had a turnover a moment ago that actually wasn't his fault. Um, Stonkas should have come to the basketball, and it actually Don's ended up stealing the basketball. 
Second free throw is good, so we are dead even at 29 with three and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Chris Perkins up near midcourt. And the Highlanders are doing. Scott misses a trade, but Jakari Johnson with the putback. Good rebound. Actually caused by Tyler Best fighting underneath. He took his guy out of the uh, play by trying to box him out and gave our guy an opportunity to get the pass. Now the Highlanders are doing what uh, what any defense should do against a pressing or trapping defense. Pressing Melbourne back. Swan misses the short shot. Hawkins with the rebound. IPFW on the run. Scott to Johnson, and we have a whistle and a foul. Ryan Anslinger says that Clayton Barker is guilty of the foul. That's his first, team eighth. One and one possibility coming up for, I believe, DeWitt Scott. Yeah, the Highlanders a moment ago, Mike, trying to change the momentum just as the Dons did against them by throwing a 1-3-1 one, one type of zone pressure defense right back at them. First free throw by Scott is good. IPFW now 12 out of 13 at the foul line. For a team that was only hitting 64% of their free throws coming in, Charlie, they're doing tremendously well. Tremendous. And this young man at the free throw line now has one of the better strokes that I've seen from the free throw line and the three-point line. Squares his body, squares his feet to the basket. Uh, great form on his shot. Second free throw good as well. The lead is four, 33-29. Magnus, top of the key, watched by Perkins. Ball nearly stolen by Johnson. Highlanders working around, 13 in the shot clock. Magnus drives and knocks it down. Oh, disallowed. Are they going to count the basket? They're going to call a foul on Magnus. But count the basket. That means IPFW will go back the other way and shoot a couple of free throws. So credit the basket to Corsi Magnus. They call that the great compromise. He also picks up his second foul here with 2.35 left in the first half. Justin Hawkins at the line for the first time today. Hawk, 6'6 senior from Garrett, Indiana. 60% free throw shooter. And that one is clean as a whistle. He looked good. Didn't look like a 60%er on that one. <laughs> Bonus free throw coming for Hawkins. You see the uh, the foul there. I think it's a good call by the official. He did let the ball go. Second free throw, no good, but it's tipped back to Hawkins. A fresh 35 for IPFW. Unfortunately, he did look like a 60%er on that one. <laughs> 2.25 to go on a half. Don's up 34 31. Scott to Hawkins. The best at the high post. Hawkins for three. Yes. Hawkins atones for his missed free throw. That's one of those examples, Mike, and there are many others. Very good three-point shooters don't fare that well at the free throw line. Uh, there are lots of examples of those at most levels of basketball. Don't quite understand it, but there are many examples of it. Barker tries his luck, and he knocks down a tray. Clayton Barker's first points of the afternoon. The lead is cut in half to three, 37-34. Lob pass for Perkins. Chris wanted to drive on Magnus. Turnaround jumper is good. Nice turnaround jumper that time on a smaller defender. Posting him up. Chris Perkins now in the scoring column. His first points of the day. Down to a minute 21 here in a half. Gift W up by 5, 39-34. Lob pass into Stockis. His shot partially blocked by Best. Stockis gets it back. Knocked away by Tyler Best and covered by Jakari Johnson. Great job that time by Best. And I believe it was Hawkins keeping their feet down on the ground and not committing the foul. Less than a minute to play here in the first half. Hawkins on the wing to Johnson. 17 on the shot clock. Jakari drives the shot a little strong. Rebound picked up by Stonkis for New Jersey Tech. And they will call a 30 second timeout. This comes with 43 seconds left in the first half. And right now, New Jersey Tech, they've hit 12 out of 27 shots as we look at the feed inside the Perkins there, Charlie. I'm not sure that was intended, wasn't intended for Justin Hawkins. 
Drewsy Tech, 12 out of 27 for 44%. Nice little pull-up jumper. IBFW, 11 out of 26 for 42%. And the Dons have cashed in is at the free throw line. They are 14 out of 16. And New Jersey Tech just 6 out of 7. You're going to win a lot of basketball games if you can shoot 90-plus percent from the free throw line. Well, play back in. Checking in for New Jersey Tech is Dan Lewis, I believe. Lewis, number 42, is a 6'7 freshman out of Center Hall, PA. About an 11-second differential shot clock and game clock. Barker, watched by Jakari Johnson. We're down to 23 seconds in the half, 10 on the shot clock. Bounce pass on the wing to Magnus. Barker will launch up a long three, and it's off the mark. Perkins with the board. Three on two for the Dons. Perkins coast to coast, and he knocks it down. Perkins now four points in a row. Barker, Stockus banks it off the glass and in with a second to go, and that'll do it. And his first half comes to an end. The home fans are happy as the teams head into the locker room. IPFW with a five-point advantage, 41-36. We will take a break and then commence with our halftime festivities. You're watching IPFW men's basketball from the Memorial Coliseum on College 5 Sports. education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Nothing gets my blood pumping more than a packed stadium, fans cheering, and the swish of a perfect basket. When I was diagnosed with colon cancer, it became an eerie silence. Early detection helped me, and it can help you too. Today, colon cancer can be treated with minimally invasive surgery, which will get you back in the game sooner than open surgery. I want you to meet my friend, Dr. Michael Harris, who's joined me in the fight. Good one, Coach. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, coach. Visit mybluestar.org and pass it on. Salam. Jam. Salam. Hey, you want? We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs are making it happen. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Pizza! Pizza! Must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum, agaricus bisporus, uh? allium sepa. Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back, everybody, to the Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, along with Charlie Washington. This is Mike Miles. We are at halftime of our men's basketball tilt featuring the Highlanders from New Jersey Institute of Technology and IPFW. And Charlie at the break, IPFW up by 5, 41, 36. Uh, this is a game where, at the start, IPFW had control early on, but credit New Jersey Tech. Uh, they didn't look like a team that was 3-13 and 13 coming in. They came back, actually had the lead on a couple of occasions before a late Mastodon rush towards the end of the half gave them a five-point lead. Now, and one of the subtle um, 
difference is in this basketball game is that zone trapping defense that the Dons went to after the Highlanders went on probably about a six or seven point run and had uh, started to seize control of the basketball game. And there are a few other things that really stand out in this basketball game in this first half. Free throws by the Dons, first of all, attacking the basket to get to the free throw line, get into that free throw line, and then making the free throws. And the other big thing I see here, Mike, one turnover, seven assists. Wow, well, we'll get into the numbers in a little bit later in the segment. But you stop and think what we didn't mention, or uh, maybe we mentioned briefly once, IPFW is playing shorthanded. Quentin Carruthers, their senior out of Flint, has a hairline fracture of his ankle. He has been out for a while. We talked to Q before the game, and he said he's hoping to hopefully be back and be ready to play in 10 days to two weeks. Jelko Egerich, the 6'9 junior out of uh, Croatia, who has played very, very well and had 18 points against Anderson University about a week or so ago. He turned an ankle last Sunday at practice, so he wasn't able to play with, against Western Illinois, and he wasn't able to play here this afternoon. And Keevan Miller, a freshman, also has been out with an injury. So you've got three members of your team in civilian clothes, and that means uh, that more players have to step up that are available to play, and uh, the Dons have responded. Right, and, you know, that typically affects three very big factors at this level of basketball, Mike. Depth, athleticism, and size. And those three players being out affect all three of those items. Uh, but Tyler Best has been big. Uh, DeWitt Scott has come in, played very well. What DeWitt Scott's doing, he came in and made a three-point shot, and I'm sure everybody's aware he's a great three-point shooter. So what he's doing is not allowing the help defense. You can't leave him because if you leave DeWitt Scott, he's going to drain the three. So that's causing um, Tyler Best to get some inside looks and Burroughs to get some good inside looks so, because you can't leave um, DeWitt Scott. Well, again, it's halftime here at the Coliseum. The Mastodons up on top of the Highlanders, 41-36. When we return, we will bring you first half numbers, and we'll see if we can get some replays as well. Again, the Mastodons trying to make it three wins in a row. We're back with more of our halftime presentation in a moment from the Coliseum. You're watching IPFW Men's Basketball on College 5 Sports. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You gotta put it in stocks. If you want to get ahead. No, no, bonds. And oh, CDs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Get it oh, it's it's you know, you uh, you stick it better. under the mattress. <laughs> you want getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. Are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven.
partial block by Johnson. But to give Milosevic credit, he hung in there, got a couple of boards, and ended up getting the bucket. That's that big run that they had gone on. But there's two baskets yep. right there. Then after that basket, we went into the 1-3-1 one, one pressure and gave them problems. Nice pull-up jumper by DeWitt Scott. Can't say enough about him squaring his feet and squaring his shoulders right to the basket. Angle with a drive. And good move by Johnson, kicking it off to best. Tyler with the left hand knocks it up and in. Nice left hand up and under move that time by Best. Great post play thus far by Tyler Best inside. Side feed to Mark Melbourne Swan, hoop for New Jersey Tech. Ooh, didn't realize Tyler Best was having his arm ripped off there underneath. Yeah, and the one off the 31 that was back as well. Drive by Magnus. That's the one where they counted the bucket and charged him with the foul after the fact. Hawkins for three. Once again, DeWitt Scott should get an assist on that. He cut through and took two defenders with him. Check comes right back with a tray of their own. Chris Perkins going up for the ball, and I think he's going to go coast to coast. Drives on Magnus. Yeah, that's that last play. You want Perkins to go ahead and take that basket, but what he did, he left a little bit too much time on the clock because it allowed this right here. And that was the final basket of the first half with one second to go by Dan Stankus. A look at some of the numbers here from the first 20 minutes of play. You see IPFW hitting 44% of their uh, shots, also 44% for New Jersey Tech. Three-point shots, four of 11 for the Highlanders, three of nine for the Dons. Free throw is the big difference, Charlie. IPFW 14 out of 16, New Jersey Tech six out of seven. Assist even at seven. Rebounding, that's a sore spot for IPFW, and they were outboarded by seven, but they did come up with four steals. So when all is said and done, uh, it's a 41-36 uh, lead for the home team at the break. Yeah, could be, you know, could be seven. Once again, you never fought a kid for going to the basket as Perkins did, um, but you want to get the last shot in that particular situation so that you don't leave time for the Highlanders to come down and do what they did to get that basket. Uh, one stat that's not up there, Mike, turnovers. IPFW, one turnover. Seven assists, one turnover. You can get a seven to one assist ratio and shoot 14 for 16 free throws. You're going to win a lot of games. Tyler Best, the only player in double figures for either team with 10. Well, we will continue our halftime intermission and get ready for the start of the second half. Again, the Dons are up by five. You're watching IPFW basketball on College 5 Sports. You know, she can continue to spill product at a rate of three per hour. Unit cost, say 60 cents. Factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales. You're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share their toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well, like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. 
Heads up, coach. Visit mybluestar.org and pass it on. Back at the Coliseum, Mike Moss, Charlie Washington, second half about to begin, and uh, we can't say Charlie thanks to our. <laughs> ah, we will. We'll hold it off. We'll keep. We'll keep the boss happy. Real, real briefly, uh, Charlie, Tech's down by five. What do they have to do to come back here in the second half? Well, we really don't want them to hear this, but what they have to do is cut back on those nine turnovers and the points off turnovers where the Dons have really um, got a big lead and get into the free throw line. Get into the free throw line, not only getting there, making them. So stop the fouls, getting the Dons to the free throw line, and cut the turnovers. Starters at start of the game will be back on for both teams. That's Stankus, Barker, Peters, Ango and Milosevic for New Jersey Tech. Johnson, Hawkins, Perkins, Best, and Burroughs for IPFW. And it's Chris Perkins with the ball. IPFW now going from right to left on your TV screen here in the second half. They have the first possession. Perkins from downtown knocks it home. Chris Perkins. Big shot coming out of the break. Makes it 44 to 36. Who needs to get loose? It's overrated. Angle kicks it onto the wing. IPFW back to a man-to-man -man defense to start the second half. That's Barker to Peters. 10 on the shot clock. Stockus to Barker is gonna drive on Jakari Johnson. Kicks it out, three-pointer by Peters is good. Boy, they used up the entire 35 seconds there. They've done that a couple of times, and now Peters is having a pretty good basketball game. He sure is. It's his second tray of the afternoon. He now has eight points. So the teams have traded three-point field goals to start the second half of play. Hawkins to Perkins. Perkins on the wing. Jakari, pass intended for Burroughs. Picked off by Andrew Engel. Here come the Highlanders. Barker on the wing, watched by Jakari Johnson. Kick it back out, lob pass for Stankus. Kicks it out. Peters stops, pops, misses, rebounded by Johnson. These first few minutes are very important of the uh, second half, Mike, and so far Don's are at least her holding serve. Tyler Best to Johnson. Jakari looks for help. Perkins inside Burroughs. Shot is partially blocked by Stonkis and now taken away by Dan Stonkis. You gotta come out there with the basket and or a foul, Mike. We played two minutes of the second half. Macedon's up 44-39. New Jersey Tech with a basketball. Peters high post, watched by Hawkins. Passing the block to Stockus. The bank shot is no good. Tipped by Burroughs to Johnson. Good smart play there by Jerron Burroughs. Charlie, he couldn't control the rebound, so he tapped it out to a teammate. Great recognition. Basketball IQ. There is Kino, as he's called. Wanting to drive on Milosevic. A little strong with the shot. Both teams, the board. both teams might get in good opportunities, just aren't uh, making the shots fall. Milosevic, a little short on the shot. Burroughs posed on the rebound. Once again, another pretty good look. Jerron now has three boards. Quickly heading towards a 17 minute mark. Each team has scored just one field goal of the long ball kind. Perkins again for three, and it's off the mark. Peters with the rebound for New Jersey Tech. Coaching staff to our left telling him to slow it down. Barker wants to drive, a little give and go. And that's gonna be a, a violation, a jump ball. The ball hangs between the glass and the rim. By rights, that's a jump ball, alternate possession, and it'll stay with New Jersey Tech. Mark Melbourne Swan back in now for the Highlanders. DeWitt Scott in for IPFW. Barker inbounds it to Peters. Ball knocked away but retrieved. Crashing Milosevic and Hawkins, and they're going to call. They show Milosevic for his second foul. First team foul of the second half. 
So with 16.44 to go, IPFW will inbound to basketball, leading 44-39. We're nearing three and a half minutes, and we have one basket apiece. And it was on the first shots that each team took in the second half. Hawkins will launch a long ball. That's short. Peters with the rebound. Numbers four, New Jersey Tech. Barker. Get it inside to Milbourne Swan. Wants to drive on best. He walked. And Brian Anslinger caught it. The uh, lead official. It is the 11th turnover on New Jersey Tech. And Milbourne Swan, he's working hard when he gets the ball down there in the post, but on at least three occasions now, he's taking the extra step, at least. Johnson, watched by Angle. We're at the 16 minute mark now of the second half. Best in the block. Driving on Milbourne Swan, is it knocked away? And they're gonna call a reach in foul. Milbourne Swan picks up the infraction. We have a timeout on the floor. 15-57 left here in the second half. IPFW 44, New Jersey Tech 39. This is IPFW Basketball on College 5 Sports. Cameron's too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, mom, I'm gonna be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. A replay of uh, activity here at the Memorial Coliseum. You see that big collision between Hawkins and Milosevic. Macedon's inbounding the ball. Scott knocks down a long two. 46-39 to score. DeWitt Scott now at double figures with 11 points. Barker wants to drive on Jakari Johnson. And we got a whistle. Johnson will be charged with the foul. His second, we'll get head coach Dane Fife. Surely we heard New Jersey's coaches talking that last time out, better shots, better rebounding, better spacing, and better defense. Well, I'm in agreement with most of that, but I think they're getting pretty decent shots, just haven't knocked them down. Highlanders working it on the perimeter. Barker pulls up. His shot bounces off the rim, misses best with the rebound. Not sure about that one. Gets it to Perkins. Perkins being hounded by Barker. Quickly up the floor, Scott for three. Short, Perkins with the offensive board. His putback is strong. And Milosevic says, I got it. Get everybody out of my way. Down to 15 minutes here in the second half. It's 46-39 IPFW. Craig Peters wants to drive on DeWitt Scott instead. Gives it to Engel. And they're going to call a hand check foul, I believe, on Chris Perkins. For Chris, that's his second foul. Team second foul here in the second half. Corsi Magnus, number five, coming back on the floor for New Jersey Tech. Highlanders went bounded underneath their own basket. Magnus will pull the trigger. And he gets it to Angle. Angle watched by Demetrius Johnson, who's now on the floor. Peters, nice little soft jumper. Craig Peters has really played well today. Yes, he's not just scored the basketball. He's played pretty good defense and had an overall uh, good floor game. Scott for three. 
DeWitt Scott, when you're hot, you're hot. And the defender fell, and uh, the Highlander coaches certainly feel like he was pushed down, but flop or not, if you give DeWitt Scott that kind of room, <laughs> you're in trouble. Melbourne Swan is fouled by Tyler Best. For Tyler, that's just his first foul of the afternoon. That comes with 14 minutes and 12 seconds left. And that's a great sign in the second half for him getting his first foul at that juncture of the basketball game. Magnus, the wind bounded for New Jersey Tech. It's it to Peters who wants to drive. That's cut off. Milosevic on Burroughs. Pull up jumper, bounces off the back of the iron and in. Jersey Tech hanging tough. They're down by just a half a dozen, 49-43. Not going away. Demetrius Johnson. Nice feed to Burroughs who lays it in. What That's a good feed. basketball. Good basketball right there on the fake, the cut, the give and go. Great job that time by the Dons. Great two-man basketball. John Burroughs now with a half a dozen. 13 and a half minutes to play. Peters gets it to Milborn Swan. He's a little turnaround jumper. In and out, no good. That's Best footwork with the right board. there. Back quickly, Burroughs on a feed from Demetrius Johnson. Great job running the floor that time because Milborn uh, was back pouting. Uh, he didn't get the call on this end, and Burroughs just continued to run the floor. Timeout called, 13.09 left. Mastodon's up 53-43. This is IPFW Basketball on College 5 Sports. Pencils, we only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Salam. Yeah. Salam. Hey, what? Hey there. Fire, fire. Shanti. Yep, Changyopi. We all want the same thing. Peace. And, and Rotary Clubs Sola. are making it happen. Lucky. Ha ha, too. Through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding La around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Back at the Coliseum. Saw a rebound. You see a replay there. Nice feed to Burroughs. 13 minutes left here. It's 53-43 IPFW. Jersey Tech with a basketball. Parker, watched by DeWitt Scott. Milosevic, he wants to drive, and he lays it off the glass and in. That's a good, strong move that time by Milosevic. 53-45. Milosevic now has 10 points. Johnson tries to get a shot off, but they're going to call a foul before the shot, says Merlin Nice. And Andrew Engel will be charged with the foul. His second, team third. Macedon's inbounding it underneath their own basket. Nice feed to Burroughs, and he jams it. <laughs> Tyler Best to Jerron Burroughs. That's great inbounds play, great fake, and then cut to the basket, and good pass and recognition by the inbounder. Burroughs has scored the last six IPFW points, and that one was with some flash. The jam. Peters driving on Scott, draws the foul. DeWitt Scott picks up his first personal foul. And we've got timeout, I believe, on the floor. Nope. Double technical foul. Craig Peters and Demetrius Johnson. A double technical at the 12-15 mark. Interesting calls there, Charlie. Yeah, I didn't see uh, the extracurricular action going on. So I'm not sure exactly what happened. There should be the un no, I'll take it back. It's 12.15 to go. Well, double technical. 
See Tyler Best talking to Greg Webb. Webb asking Brian Anslinger, what are we going to do? Are there going to be free throws or not? Typically, there are not on uh, double technicals. Well, Craig Peters is going to shoot two. From the, uh, he was shooting um, right before that, as we see the slam by Burroughs. Yeah, he got the foul, just got the foul that Scott was charged with. Exactly. And he knocks down the first free throw. He has one more coming. He'll try to draw New Jersey Tech to within eight. If he can be successful. And he is. So Peters knocks down a pair. Boy, he's now got 12 points. Nice Hot move. the bucket by Johnson. Great job that time keeping the dribble until or if the defender stopped you. In that particular case, the defensive person did not stop him, and he kept going, got a little bump, and nailed the left-handed layup. Ango picks up the foul, his third, second in a manner of about 38 game seconds, and Demetrius Johnson knocks down the free throw, the conventional three-point play. And that puts IPFW up 58-47. And they're creeping away. Now's the time to start putting the foot on that throat and going for the juggler. Milosevic up top to Angle on the left wing. Reverse it and go to the opposite side. 16 on the shot clock. Lob pass for Stankis. Driving on Burroughs. Turnaround shot is good. Nice jump for a great stop. Collect yourself, nice footwork, turn around, jump hook. Nice job that time. Stockis now has two field goals for four points. 11 and a half minutes to go. Mastodon's up 58-49. They have the basketball. Jakari tried to hit best. Loose ball. Johnson will bank it off the glass and in. Demetrius Johnson not afraid to get in where the big boys are. No, he's a big guard at 6'4". Now has five points, the lead up to 11 at 60 to 49. We're near the 11 minute mark. Wide open is Engel for three, that's no good. Rebound, plucked down by DeWitt Scott. To Johnson and here come the Mastodons up the floor. DeWitt Scott for three, no. Stockis with the rebound, outlets it to Engel. Tech wanting to move in a hurry. Magnus has a shot blocked out of bounds by Jerron Burroughs. Great block that time by Burroughs, Mike. But you want to teach your shot blockers. If you can, try to keep it in bounds, tip it to one of your players, and go down on the fast break. A great block nonetheless. 10.35 to go. Timeout on the floor. Don's up 60 to 49. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 5 Sports. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you remember where you were? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if it calls you to go halfway around the world? To share your skills? To serve people you've never met. To do things you never thought you could. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps. Life is calling. How far will you go? Welcome back, everybody, to the, to the <laughs> Memorial Coliseum. I'm getting ahead of myself. Later on tonight, Arnie Ball's IPFW Volley Dance will take on Penn State at the Hillier Gate Sports Center. But here it's men's basketball. IPFW headed to Jersey Tech, and we're going to have a foul called, I believe, on Tyler Best of IPFW. 
That is his second fourth uh, uh, second half. Not a bad foul. Best had to work his way around uh, the offensive player. Otherwise, you get an easy bucket. Magnus will inbound the ball for the Highlanders. Gets it to Peters, and they work it around. It's Clayton Barker way out top. Watched by Jakari Johnson. Magnus, FFW is taking a man to man defense. And now we have a traveling call called on New Jersey Tech. Turnover number 11. Boy, and you see that turnover ratio 11 for Tech and 2 for IPFW. One big reason why the Dons are up by 11. Scott wants to drive, kicks it out to Burroughs. They're working around to a wide open Scott in the left side. His three is good. Boy, good ball movement. It is a pretty thing to watch him shoot the basketball, the way he squares up and faces the basket. He's got three three-point field goals, two of them coming here in the second half. Barker loses the ball, picked up by Demetrius Johnson. And he has the ball knocked out of bounds. They're going to call a reach-in foul on Barker. Be his second. Team foul number five. Barker tried to knock the ball away from Demetrius Johnson. Jakari Johnson to inbound it. Johnson to Johnson. <laughs> Best in the block. Wants to drive on Milbourne Swan. Spin move, shot up, no good. But uh, Tyler Best will go to the foul line. For Mark Milborn Swan, it is personal foul number three. And that time, Charlie, it was a case the Dons wanted to play a little high low with best in the low block. Well, that prescription that we set out at the beginning of the basketball game, continue to shoot the ball well uh, from the outside, get the ball inside, and get to the free throw line has uh, been working quite well for the Dons. And so far, it's a winning prescription uh, for a big lead in this basketball game and hopefully a victory. Tyler Best makes the first free throw. That's his 11th point. First point of the second half. He's now five out of five at the stripe. Make it six out of six. And he has a dozen points. 65-49 our score. 9-17 to go here in the second half. Magnus. To Peters, long three-point shot is good. Craig Peters playing a very nice game for New Jersey Tech. Yes, he is, and uh, he's a darn good athlete too. I could see how high he went up on that last uh, traveling call. He just went up and kind of dunked the ball, and man, he's he can jump. He's got 14 points. Down to 8:47. Best up top. Oh, nice feed to Burroughs. Shot is no good, but again, nice pass from Tyler Best to Jerron Burroughs. Nice high-low post-to-post action right there. Of course, he Magnus draws the foul, his third, team seventh. So, bonus situation, although it'll be a two-shot foul here for Jerron Burroughs. And he's four out of four at the line today. Friendly roll. Rolls around and in. Charlie, who would have thunk it? IPFW at this juncture, 18 out of 20 at the free throw line. Certainly not I. Would have hoped, but not thunk. <laughs> Second free throw on the way. And that also gets a friendly roll. For Jerron Burroughs. Still perfect at the line. Oh, I think he's five out of six at the line. Correct myself. But the lead is up to 15, 67 to 52. Magnus, long jumper off the rim. Fight for the rebound, and Milburn Swan outdoes DeWitt Scott. Islanders will reload. Milburn Swan. Gets it to Peters on the wing. Do a little clear out. Oh, nice feed to Milburn Swan. He misses the shot but draws the foul. 
I'll tell you what, Mike, the effort of the Highlanders has not eased up. Even though this lead has creeped and creeped a little higher for the Dons, they are not laying down. They're continuing to play hard and scrap. Jakari Johnson picks up his third foul. But free throws coming up for Mark Milborn Swan. He had seven points in the first half. And misses the first free throw. Well, New Jersey Tech, like IPFW, making the transition from Division II to Division I. This is their first official year as a D1. Get a look at the replay here. Second free throw on the way, and that one is good. So Milburn Swan, one out of two on that trip to the line. 67-53. Scott for three. No. Milburn Swan with the rebound. DeWitt had a wide open look. If there's such thing as a good looking miss, Mike, that was it. Good feed to Stonkis down low, and Stonkis banks one off the glass and in. 67-55. New Jersey Tech not giving up. Burroughs comes right back and banks one off the glass and in. Boy, Jerron Burroughs is playing well here in the second half. Well, a 23-point career high give you a little confidence. Milburn Swan has a shot blocked by Burroughs, but they're going to say that Keno got the body as well. That is his first foul of the afternoon, and we have timeout on the floor. 7.17 to go. Mastodon 69, Highlanders 55. We hope you're enjoying IPFW basketball on College 5 Sports. Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. <clears throat> so, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. Join, uh, join Chris Paul and yours truly for the Chris Paul Show. It's seen three times weekly, Wednesdays at 6.30, Fridays at 5.30, and Saturdays at 12.30. The head coach of the IPFW women's basketball team joins yours truly to review recent games. Talk with players and preview upcoming action. Again, it's the Chris Paul Show on College 5 Sports. I guess I'm like most kids. I work hard. I go to class. First free throw is up and in by Mark Milborn Swan. 7-17 to go. It's IPFW 69, New Jersey Tech 56. Second free throw is also good. So Milborn Swan, two for two on that trip. He's now four out of five in the game from the free throw line. And into double figures with 10 points. FW. Wow, oh, bad pass from Johnson intended for Tyler Best. It's turnover number three. Magnus on the swing, watched by Scott. Give and go, Milborn Swan, shot knocked away by Burroughs, but picked up by Peters. He knocks, throws up a three ball, and that's no good, and we got bodies hitting the floor. And they're gonna say ball was out of bounds, last touch by IPFW. Great weak side help that time uh, by Burroughs. Perry Johnson hit the deck. Peters kicks it out to Engel. W playing some tough D. 
angle. Give and go. Three point shot, no good. Jakari Johnson pulls down the rebound. Don's gonna do, oh, what a feed from Johnson to Burroughs. And they're gonna call a foul on Milbourne Swan. But what a feed from Demetrius Johnson to Jerron Burroughs. And Kino, as one of his uh, nicknames is, is just running the floor, getting easy opportunity after easy opportunity for the Dons. That's four personals on Mark Milburn Swan. He will check out. Milosevic will check in. And Jerron Burroughs will go to the line to shoot one and one. Yes, they did call that on the floor. Boy, it is fun watching Demetrius Jansen play the point. Burroughs misses the free throw, and now we got a push off on IPFW. Chikari Jansen now has picked up his fourth personal foul. Watch this pass. Thank you, Bernie, back at the, calling the shots. Keeping your head up as a point guard and recognizing there's a little seam there. And Thread at the needle right through that scene. At the free throw line, Dan Stonkis. First time today he's at the charity stripe. Misses the first end of the one and one. But Scott pulled down the rebound and gives it to Demetrius Johnson. 6.09 to go. 69 57 our score. IPFW on top. And DeWitt Scott lost control of the basketball and ultimately was called for traveling. Here comes New Jersey Tech. Going from left to right on your TV screen. Peters watched by Justin Hawkins. Pass intended for Milosevic, but Milosevic went left, the pass went right. Great pickup that time by one of the IPFW cheerleaders. Great awareness that time, didn't let the ball get past it. New Jersey Tech now has turned the ball over 13 times. 5.42 to go. Mastodons in search of their third win in a row, all coming here at the Coliseum. Best is double teamed. Tries to find Hawkins and throws it away. And that's, that's three turnovers, I think, uh, Charlie on the last five IPFW possessions after going the first half with just one turnover. Right, it's going to make that total look a little skewed there uh, at the end of the basketball game. They played very turnover free uh, basketball, but like you said, these last uh, few possessions, uh, they've been coughing it up. Clayton Barker back on the floor for New Jersey Tech. He has the basketball down near the 520 mark. Islanders down by a dozen. 18 on the shot clock. It's angle. Lob pass. Knocked out of bounds by Burroughs. Oh, they say glance from Burroughs off Milosevic's arm. Good play there by John Burroughs reading the pass. Just being active. He's been very active on both ends of the court. Demetrius Johnson walks it up over midcourt. Another best. Hands it off to Demetrius Johnson. Always looking for a teammate. Pass, oh, Hawkins <laughs> retrieved it. Nearly a turnover there. Eight on the shot clock. Johnson, knocks down a three. He's played extremely well since he's come back into the uh, basketball game that second time. 72, 57. Demetrius Johnson has scored eight points all here in the second half. Angle. Peters. Milosevic going to try his luck. And he banks it off the glass and in. Second very similar move from Milosevic from the top of the key, driving it all the way in. Didn't get quite as, quite as close that time as he did the first time. Milosevic now with 12 points. Burroughs, they're on the horn to Johnson. It's Demetrius Johnson. 3.44 to go. Lob pass to Best. TB kicks it out to Burroughs. Johnson for three. No. Ball picked off by Engel. 
comes New Jersey Tech up the floor in a hurry. Long jumper by Barker off the mark. Scott with the rebound. The fans here at the Coliseum are enjoying what they're seeing. IPFW up 72-59 at the 310 mark. And they've played some very good basketball uh, throughout uh, the game. Best looking. Gets it to Scott. 15 in the shot clock. Under three minutes now. And we have a foul going to be called on Barker. Clayton Barker now with three personal fouls, 19 fouls, and we have timeout on the floor. 2.56 left, Mastodon 72, Highlanders 59. You're watching IPFW Basketball on College 5 Sports. I guess I'm like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's gonna mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education, and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's gotta feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Are you in there? What's up, the show's a seven. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back at the Coliseum. Good look at a replay of the IPFW offense in action. Nice little three point field goal by Demetrius Johnson. Charlie, IPFW playing good man to man defense there. Milosevic well, got the, uh, the bucket, even though TB went down. Demetrius Johnson knocks down a free throw. He was fouled by Clayton Parker right prior to the timeout. First free throw is good. And on that prior replay, my great use of the screen that time by Burroughs of Johnson. And then a nice little crossover to shed the defender, and then he's wide open for the three point basket, and he nailed it. FW 21 out of 24 at the line. They're up 74-59 with 2.45 to go. Angle. Watched by Demetrius Johnson. Milosevic wants to drive on Burroughs. Forces up a 15-footer. No good. Stankis with the putback, however. And Stankis with eight points. And now we have a whistle and a foul going to be called on Milosevic. And for Nesho Milosevic, that is personal foul number three, but it is team foul number 10. So a double bonus time for the last two minutes and 23 seconds, and Demetrius Jansen will be the recipient. And he knocks down a free throw. And you see the stonk is put back. Second free throw up and in. 76 61, 220 to go. Peters wants to drive on. Justin Hawkins has it knocked away by Hawkins, picked by, by Burroughs, who turns it over to Engel. Peters over the outstretched hand of. Tyler Best, 76-63, and now a foul going to be called on New Jersey Tech. And Craig Peters will pick up the foul. That just, is his second. Excuse me, Mike, just looking at this uh, Islander basketball team, I'm not sure, I'm um, have to look back and see who they play, but they certainly don't play like a 3-13 and basketball team. Well, they have played Army and Navy. They've played a couple of, uh, they played Maine, Lafayette, Longwood, as Demetrius Johnson knocks down yet another free throw. They won their first two games to start the year, but then lost 13 in a row before beating Longwood Tuesday night, 59-55. Johnson knocks down another freebie. 
So they have played some pretty good teams, and as you stated earlier, as they're entering uh, Division One, they're going to be on the road quite a bit playing some pretty darn good basketball teams. That they will. Milosevic wants to drive on Burleson best, and an offensive foul called on Milosevic, and he can't believe it. And Burroughs doing it all. 145 to go. One thing to note, Charlie, these two teams will meet again on February 17th in New Jersey. So the Highlanders will be out for revenge in a few weeks. 135 to go. IPFW has this one under control, 78-63. Give New Jersey Tech credit, they're still hustling. Demetrius Johnson looking for best in the block. Tyler wants to drive on Stankus and gets the friendly roll. Nice move. Tyler Bass has played a very good basketball game this evening, getting extra minutes due to the injuries and performing extremely well. Best has 14 points. 103 to go. Engel tries to find Milosevic. And that's an offensive foul on the step in by Tyler Bass. Foul's going to be on Engel, and he has four. 61 seconds left. Best in bounce it to Demetrius Johnson. Back to best. Demetrius gets it over midcourt. And the Don spread it out now. 45 seconds left. Demetrius Johnson watched. By Magnus. Fans starting to applaud behind us. 33 seconds left. Best. The Burrows off the glass and in. Great assist that time. And great recognition and body readiness that time by Burrows. Best to Burrows. Burrows with 12 points in the second half, 15 overall. 18 seconds left, shot clock off. Stankis, 17-footer in and out. Rebounded, uh, well, off last touch by Burroughs. Out of bounds, it'll be New Jersey Tech ball with 11.1 seconds left. 82-63 to score. Macedons will up their record to 7-11 with their third win in a row. Stankis, foul line extended, misses the shot. Angle with the offensive board. 4-3-2, long jumper, no good. Milosevic off the glass with 1.1 seconds to go. And that will do it. Point goes off. This game is in the books. Final score, IPFW 82, New Jersey Tech 65. Macedon, as we said, up to 7 and 11. Highlanders drop to 3 and 14. We will take a break as players and coaches congratulate each other, and we hope to have associate coach Jeff Tungate join us. Again, Mastodon's victorious today, 82-65 over New Jersey Tech. We're back with our post-game show in just a couple of moments here on College 5 Sports. foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Warning, ruthless invaders are among us and the future of fishing depends on stopping them dead. Only you can prevent invasive species from spreading before it's too late. Inspect, clean and drain your boat, motor and live wells and properly dispose of invasive species on land, not back in the water. Stop these evil menaces from taking over and threatening our precious outdoor heritage. Inspect, clean, and drain. Do your part to halt the silent invasion. Great. Welcome back, everybody, to the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne, Indiana, along with Charlie Washington. This is Mike Miles. And this afternoon, Charlie, we saw IPFW win their third game in a row. All of them ironically coming here at home at the Coliseum. 
as they defeated uh, New Jersey Tech by a final score of 82-65. And you look at a 17-point differential for the final outcome, but New Jersey Tech played hard uh, in spite of the fact that they fell short. They did try. There are no indications that they were a 3-13 and 13, uh, basketball team, but as we stated earlier, they're entering Division One, and as we know from experience, you're on the road and you're playing a lot of tough teams uh, trying to get some recognition, trying to get finances and so on and so forth to get to that Division One level and status. Uh, the Dons give them credit for uh, playing a great basketball game. If you give out their numbers at the beginning of the game, before the game starts, you're going to have a winning basketball team. Great assist to turnover ratio, great free throw shooting, pretty decent uh, shooting from the floor. Overall, very good inside play, um, and Burroughs was just great, just everywhere, running the floor, playing inside, making good passes, uh, receiving the basketball, so tremendous job by him. Well, we'll go over the numbers momentarily, but uh, you stop and think, this is the third win in a row at home for IPFW. Now they're going to go on the road for four games, and for New Jersey Tech, this was the start of a five-game road trip they still have to play at LaSalle, at Siena, uh, at Utah Valley State, and at Texas Pan American before they go back home on February the 8th to play South Dakota State. So uh, the fortune's good for uh, IPFW. They're now up to 7 and 11, and 3 um, and 14 mark for New Jersey Tech. And uh, we are going to be joined momentarily by associate head coach Jeff Tungate. And we've just given Jeff a microphone. Jeff, uh, pull up a chair and have a seat. <laughs> and uh, thanks for uh, coming and visiting with us. Uh, New Jersey Tech, they didn't look like a 3-13 and 13 team early because they hustled all the way. And though you led early, they actually had a couple of leads in the first half. Yeah, they really played well. They run their stuff real well. And, 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 uh, and, and you know, we didn't do a real good job defensively, but a lot of that credit has to go to them and what they did offensively. So... They really owned the boards on us in the first half, and you know, it's one of those games that we really felt if we could put multiple stops together, we could blow this thing wide open. And in the second half, we were able to put some multiple stops together with under 10 minutes to go. You're up only by five at the break. Uh, what did uh, Dane and you and uh, your colleagues tell the players in the locker room? Well, the biggest thing was rebound the basketball. I mean, I think a lot of their points in the first half came off second shots, and you know, the second thing we talked about was just having to get it done on the defensive end. It seemed like every time. Every time we come down, the crowd would want to get in the game. The team would get a little energy going. They'd come down and hit a shot at the other end. And, and, and for us to kind of get to the next step, we got to get multiple stops. And that's the biggest thing we talked about at halftime was putting together multiple stops. Charlie Washington was mentioning to our uh, viewers during the broadcast, Jerron Burroughs, he had the great game Tuesday night against Western Illinois, and he continued his fine play today at both ends of the floor because he had a couple of blocks and some boards, and uh, he was pretty good at the foul line too. You know, yeah, first half, he, first five, six, seven minutes of the game, he, he was, I think, still enjoying his last success from the last game. But um, after that, he kind of came around, and, and Coach really challenged him at halftime. And I thought he, especially the second half, got back to where he was like he was the other night. But, you know, he's a guy that can really change the game for us because he can get offensive rebounds. He can block shots. You know, he, he's, he's a presence down low. Um, he can do a lot of things that, that really can change the game. You know, in our, our zone defense, he does a good job at the top of that, too. So, um, you know, he, he's a player that's really getting better every game. Hopefully they'll continue and, and, and take the next step uh, for Loyola Chicago. You mentioned zone defense, and Charlie pointed it out. It, you, the team switched from man-to-man -to, -man to zone midway through the first half, and Tech actually, I think, had the lead when you made the switch, and all of a sudden they couldn't buy a bucket. Our, our zone's been pretty good. It's something we've been working on for about three weeks, and, you know, we've run it for five straight games now and been pretty successful with it. And, you know, it, it's something to keep teams on their heels and keep them from driving the ball in the paint and, you know, and, and maybe take away some low post play by, by going to that zone. It just seems that starting the games, teams are having a way too easy time driving the ball, getting the ball down low for easy buckets. And by going zone, it makes them take some perimeter shots. And, and I think it's a lot easier from a psyche of a team at halftime to say, you know, boy, they're shooting 55% from three as opposed to they're shooting layups. You know, and so by going to the zone, if they do make some lay make some threes, then, you know, we'll get out of it. But um, I just think it's, it's tough when they're getting driven, they're getting layup after layup after layup. you got to do something different. That's when we went to the zone. We have to ask you, Jeff, who's going to take credit for being the free throw coach 
25 out of 28 at the line today. Well, for 25 for 28, I'll go ahead and take the credit today. Um, the last game, I think we'll blame somebody, maybe uh, Coach Jass or Coach Fife or somebody or Coach Johnson. It just depends on the day. But, no, it, it, it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, we've really been struggling from the line all year, and it's not that we don't work on it. It's just something that we haven't been making foul shots. And, and, and I think tonight, you know, our guys really stepped up and made them, and Demetrius made some big ones down the stretch because this game wasn't secure until he started making those free throws. I mean, that game still could have went either way, and once he, once he stepped up and, and hit those – key shots down the stretch that made all the difference in the world three wins in a row all here at the coliseum now the team is going to travel the next four games all away from home next saturday at loyola chicago then at valparaiso at texas pan american and then at utah valley state what does the team have to do to keep the momentum that they've built up by these three wins at home as they go on the road defend I mean, that's you, you got to play better defense on the road than you do at home. You know, I think it's easier to, you know, tonight we shot 51% from the floor. It's a lot easier to shoot the ball at home than it is on the road, and you got to do a better job defensively to, to win on the road, and that's something that, that we've got to do. You know, I think against uh, Western Illinois, I thought the last 10 minutes of the game we did a good job defensively, and I thought tonight the last 10 minutes we did a fairly good job defensively, and, you know, for us to win on the road, we've got to do that for 40 minutes. We can't just do it in the second half. Well, congratulations to uh, your colleagues on the team for their third win in a row. It's now 7 up and 11 down, and uh, good luck as you embark on this four-game road trip. Thank you, guys. That is Jeff Tungate, the associate head coach for IPFW. And, uh, uh, again, a, a good win for the Dons, Charlie. And uh, we'll look at the numbers here shortly, but uh, the bottom line is IPFW has won three games in a row. Yeah, there's no question about that. Now it's time to go on the road, and hopefully we can develop some type of consistency on the road. Uh, have to serve uh, home court, and done a good job of doing that. Got to win the games here, make it a home court advantage, and now get over that hump, edge back towards that 500 watermark, and get some wins on the road. Well, let's take one other final break. When we come back, we'll have the final numbers and possibly some highlights as well. Again, IPFW victorious today over New Jersey Tech, 82-65. We'll wrap things up in a moment from the Coliseum. You're watching IPFW Basketball on Cowich 5 Sports. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You gotta put it in stocks. If you wanna get ahead. No, no, bonds. And oh, CDs. Get it balanced. Oh, get it balanced. Stick it under the mattress. <laughs> You want Getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, coach. Visit mybluestar.org and pass it on. Welcome back, everybody. Along with Charlie Washington, this is Mike Moss. You're watching the post-game show. IPFW victorious today over New Jersey Tech. Final score, 82-65. And... Charlie, we're going to see some final numbers up here in a moment that will show the IPFW dominance on this Saturday afternoon. As you see, uh, the Dons hit 59% of their shots on the floor to 39% for New Jersey Tech. 7 of 19 from long ball range, 6 for 15 for the Highlanders. That big differential, 25 of 28 at the line, 11 to 14 for New Jersey Tech. 
assists, 15 to 11 in favor of IPFW. They did get out rebounded 38 23, but uh, they also led in steals 5 to 2. But uh, take away the rebounds, and it was pretty much IPFW. The scoring leaders, Craig Peters, 17 points uh, for uh, New Jersey Tech. Nesho Milosevic with 14, and Mark Milborn Swan with 10 for IPFW. DeWitt Scott, 17. Jerron Burroughs, 15, and Tyler Best, 14. All in all, uh, a nice job well done today by Dane Fife's Chargers. Great job. The only thing, you know, on the negative side, you look at the rebounding, and a lot of those rebounds were uh, second chance putbacks or second and third and a fourth chance, you know, opportunities. Highlights. Nice shot there by Chris Perkins. And Tech moved it around. Uh, New Jersey Tech, you stop and look at their roster, only two seniors and three juniors, it's all freshmen and sophomores. Here's the upcoming schedule for IPFW men's basketball. A week from today, January 20th, they're at Loyola, Chicago, a 3 p.m. Fort Wayne tip-off. Monday, January 22nd at Valparaiso. Uh, and then on February 1st, they are down in Edinburgh, Texas, taking on the Bronx of Texas Pan American. And we want to remind you that next Saturday afternoon, while the men are on the road, the women will be back home. And uh, they will be playing host to Butler University from down in Indianapolis. I believe that's a 1 p.m. tip-off. We'll have that broad game for you. Men's volleyball uh, next week. Friday night at Loyola Chicago. Saturday night at Clark University in Iowa. The Dons playing Penn State tonight at the Gates Center. That's it for this edition of IPFW Men's Basketball. Charlie, always enjoy working with you, and we'll see you again down the road. Thank you, sir. Always fun and great time working with you. Again, our final score today, IPFW 82, New Jersey Tech 65. want to remind you to tune in again on February 8th. That's the next time you will see IPFW Men's Basketball on uh, College 5 Sports, Comcast 252, My TV. That's Thursday evening, February 8th, when North Dakota State comes to town. For Charlie Washington, this is Mike Miles. Again, our final score, IPFW 82, New Jersey Tech 65. Thank you for watching this edition of IPFW Basketball from the Memorial Coliseum here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. <laughs>